Hey Optimancers, Chris here. A little over a month ago I was contacted by Dragori Games to ask if I'd do a review of their new free adventure and player pack for 5th edition taking place in their custom campaign world of Teneres. I've never heard of Dragori Games before, or Teneres, but a bit of research led me to Arena the Contest. This is a miniatures board game with a successful Kickstarter that raised nearly a million dollars, and then they followed that up with Teneri's Adventures, which has been more than twice as successful, continuing the miniatures game in their created campaign world, and then with their Dragon Collection, which are some really quite stunning miniatures. I asked around, and the buzz on Dragora Games has been very positive. They're known for the quality of their miniatures they produce, their communication, and continuous updates to Kickstarter backers and the customer service they provide is, I've heard, quite good. I was asked by Dragori Games what I would charge to do a video to review their foray into 5th edition, and after my research I told them I would happily review the product if they provided me a copy and I'd show off these products at no charge. Dragori Games has decided to bring their campaign world to 5th edition, which they are calling the Teneres RPG. To be clear, this is a campaign world and adventure path for 5th edition D&D. To promote their upcoming Kickstarter, they've decided to release a one-shot adventure and some campaign world information as a free sample. Today I'll be highlighting and reviewing that sample pack. This sample pack is available for download now, and I'll be providing a link in the video description where you can claim your copy. First, we receive a 13-page overview of the campaign world of Teneres. Just flipping through the pages, I am really impressed by the level of artwork we see through this entire product. Reading the campaign world information, we discover that Teneres is a world where the Empire reigns supreme, and in their world they enforce a decree prohibiting large-scale battles due to the Malrokian curse, where massive bloodshed is answered with natural disasters. The campaign world is shrouded in mystery, the dragons who enacted the curse, and the remnants of ancient civilizations to be explored. In order to resolve conflicts, champion adventures fight in the arena. The arena fights will be a major factor in the adventure path, and the completed rules will include some guidelines for player characters to fight in the arena against other champions, as well as some rules for player versus player combat. Dragons in this world seem to be far above what we're used to in Dungeons & Dragons. The Avatar Dragons are believed to be manifestations of gods. These will be the greatest challenges in the Teneres campaign world. This won't be a case of walk into the cave, there's a dragon, kill the dragon. Finding the lairs of these dragons is going to be a quest of its own, as will weakening them so they might actually be challenged, and preparing for the encounter. Dragons may also be potentially recruited, or eggs hatched and raised to fly, as your own dragon mount. Special rules for aerial combat and dragon versus dragon combat are promised for the final product. The promise here is through adventure the party will discover clues that players can use to deduce the best measures, items, and actions to take before encountering a dragon, rather than reducing everything to randomness and ability checks. The DM is going to determine aspects of the campaign world at the beginning of the adventure path that are supposedly going to shape the story into 16 possible scenarios that they promise will be vastly different. Regardless of which of these 16 scenarios you choose, one common historic point binds them together. The ancient civilization of the mystical kingdom and the capital city of Arcana fell to the Melrokian curse. Out of its ashes formed the Empire, which created the prohibition of gatherings of armed people, and they've kept the peace for over a hundred years. Something's not quite right, though, with the Empire either, and their rule is considered tyrannical by many. Discovering the true nature of the Empire is also hinted at being a major plot point of the adventure path. Players also choose which factions their characters are going to represent in the arena, and for which they will be officially and magically attached. The second thing we receive is a player's pack that includes some new, and I have to say, extremely unique classes. These are not complete classes, but just a preview of what's to come. You can make a low-level character using these classes. First, we have the Dragonblade. 
It's an intelligence-based, and I, I guess I'll say martial, since they use armor and weapons, but the primary power of the class manifests through their draconic powers. We just get a small sample of these powers, but they seem to be well thought out and provide a lot of customization options for your Dragonblade character. The second class is the Madwalker. I should begin by noting that this class uses a system referred to as Insanity Points, and these Insanity Points are involved in the manifestation of abnormalities in the player character. Now, I don't have a background in mental health, but to my understanding, this kind of system could potentially be considered problematic. So whether you want to use this class at all may be based on your views on these terms and their use here. Perhaps the designer should consider terms like stress or resiliency before the official release. That said, if you consider the class to be a problem, it seems like you could simply not use it, or some slight alterations on the terms used could probably fix the problems, but I thought I should mention that before I go on. Mechanically, this class taps the powers of the Penumbra, another plane of existence, to transform and mutate themselves. They gain advantages in traversing that plane, and the mutations again are selected by the player to customize the powers gained through this connection. Again, these powers are unlike anything we've seen before. One example is there's a secretion that leaves a trail wherever your character moves that creates light, difficult terrain, and can cause creatures in it to fall prone. It is not really possible at this point to assess the power levels of these classes without the entirety of the draconic powers and mutations printed, but I was personally assured that class balance is a top priority of the designers for these classes. Of course, I was immediately thinking how these could be used as low-level dips for other classes, and there are some options there. We also see a couple new subclasses. Again, we just get a sampling of these new options. We have a new wizard subclass called the Lost Magic Researcher. At second level, they can use their Arcana skill proficiency to potentially provide boosts to the power of spells they cast. This seems like an easily optimizable ability. The Courage Domain is the new Clerical Domain. Their powers seem to be based around buffing themselves or their allies. And the first level power seems pretty potent to me. A new species is introduced, the Taimaku, I don't know if I pronounce that right, a race of sharp-minded creatures that have a very unique ability that rewards them for keeping their ability scores in balance. This is something I would really need to play around with to determine its value. We also have a few new spells introduced. I'm guessing the final product will have more. There are some interesting spells here. How about a cantrip that requires it to hit roll and the creature takes a d4 penalty on its next d20 roll? Buffing spells that increase your proficiency bonus. Now I have to say these new mechanics bring some questions on how they would interact with some of the existing abilities in the game. For example, if your proficiency bonus is increased for a minute, do you get an extra use of your proficiency bonus per day abilities? Hopefully these kinds of questions will be answered. We get some sample player characters using these new mechanics at the end of the player's pack, and I have to say, these character sheets are beautiful. I mean, just look at these. Finally, this product brings us the free one-shot adventure, and this is a complete product. It is obviously intended to be a teaser for the complete adventure path, which will reportedly be over 200 pages long, but this can be played as a standalone adventure and everything is included to run it immediately. Downloading this sample pack is worth it just for this. I should mention you also have enough information of the sample classes and subclasses to try them out in this adventure if you wanted to do so. Now this is reported as a one-shot, but I expect the average group is going to need at least a couple sessions to work through this entire thing, unless you want a long day of playing. The story is fairly linear, with player agency provided in how the PCs will deal with plots and challenges along the way. There's a lot of background information, as well as fleshed out NPCs to interact with, and again, I'm impressed by the artwork here. Every single NPC is provided with supporting art. As one would expect, our climax includes a battle in the arena. And I have to say the battle map here, that's amazing. 
solid artwork that includes lots of little terrain features that beg for players to be creative rather than just sling spells and swing swords. Monsters and NPCs use custom stat blocks rather than just referring you to an entry in the monster manual, so players won't know the abilities and features of the opponents they face. For me, this is a big plus, because when you've played the game for a long time, it's hard not to take out-of-character knowledge into account, and this removes that problem. So the product here, it is very high quality. If the rest of the Tenere's RPG has the same level of quality, it should be pretty interesting to see. There's going to be an app, the Tenares app, that's going to include a 3D navigation of the campaign world, though Dragora Games also promises popular gaming platforms like Roll20 will also have content imported. The Kickstarter for the RPG is slated to begin this August, but for now, check it out yourself with the free sample pack. I've linked it in the video description. Otherwise, until next time, I'm going to sit back, relax, and have some fun. D&D is for everyone. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you soon.